Welcome back to this Olitopa episode number three about the Olivetti L1M20. In the previous episode, we looked at the power supply and it's working. So I hope in this episode, we will be able to hook it up to the computer and see if it actually runs. Before we can do that, we need to rip out the motherboard from the cabinet and I will move you closer and I'll show you how to do that. So stay tuned for this one. So let's take away the keyboard, the memory board that's up here and um, there's a bit of a story behind these three slots and these boards, but more on that, once we have hooked up the computer and see if it's actually running. It's not just a memory board. Well, it is, but there are different kinds of boards and uh, we need to have a look into that. So with this out of the way, we need to find the screws and I need to find a screwdriver, right? To get the board out. But you know what? That's not how it works. There are no screws. And this is what I'm a little bit afraid of. So if I move it up a little bit to you, so you can see down there and down there, there are two plastic thingies that needs to be bent backwards and then the motherboard can be lifted out, obviously very carefully, because that's how we take out the board. So I'm not gonna... <laughs> I need to be very gentle with this and I'm really afraid of breaking this. And you should think there should be a screw, but there's not a screw. I don't know if there were that original. So if you are an owner of an L1 M20 and you know that there should be screws, please let me know so I can then put in some screws. But I don't think so. I just think I need to bend those backwards and move the motherboard up and then I will clean it once I've done the cleaning, um, I will come back to you and then we can see if we can test all of this. One motherboard is out now and uh, I was a bit afraid but it was okay and um, it looks fairly nice but it is dusty so if I take my finger up here and do this you can see it's very dusty so um, what I will do with this motherboard because this is very dear to me um, I will be Removing all the chips that are socket, I will remove all of those before I clean it. And obviously I'll be cleaning it in, um, in um, IPA, rinse it down and, and ensure that it's, all this dust is gone. Then I will spray some uh, contact cleaner on all these up here and, and in the sockets. And that is a little bit of um, a grease that goes all over the place. So once that's done, I need to clean it again just to get rid of the worst of um, that contact cleaner. And once that's done, I will clean this. Let me just put this to the side here. I shall clean the cabinet, um, take out the, the fan. That's going to be an issue for me to take it out because it's just like the Olivetti M24. This one is not screwed in. It's these plastic thingies. 
and they are a little bit of pain in the butt to get out but if you move it and press on it and then you usually can take it out this way. Um, if I don't succeed um, I will um, make screws but I hope I can make that work. And um, cleaning this so it's ready for the motherboard to get back in. So let me do this. Well that was fun. I do love cleaning stuff. So as you can see now the motherboard is all clean and everything has been tested all soldering and what have you everything should be fine and ready for us to test and as promised i've also cleaned the casing so everything has been cleaned scrubbed washed ensured that everything is working as it should and um, just a little bit about the bottom of the casing um, these are the clips where the motherboard is uh, is put into and i was talking about maybe there should be a screw there is definitely no way to screw into this so there shouldn't be a need for any screws also i managed to take out the fan clean that that is spinning as it should um, just tiny thing down there there's a I don't know what you call it whatever this needs to be screwed out when you screw this out this element here can be taken out and once that's been pulled or lifted up this plate down there can also be pulled up so everything is nice clean and um, also the monitor I had a look into a peek into and um, if we should just briefly have a close-up of what's inside the monitor it is very clean I haven't done anything I didn't even need to blow any air in it this is nice crispy and there's nothing to do with this one the only thing I just did I put some contact cleaner into this which is probably for contrast there are lots of adjustments in the board up here and um, if the monitor doesn't work we'll need to open this one up again and have a look at that just here is the back of the casing this is the weird plug that cable goes in all the way in here and ends actually in here and i can actually take it out it's just a normal plug like this so with all of this i'm ready to put this one into that one and then take the power supply and also put it into that one and then we shall test it we still need to have a look at the floppy disk drives and the keyboard but that's for the next episode right so let me do one little thing again Ta -da! So before I show you the computer, because I have sampled it, I just wanted to tell you a little bit, very briefly, about how I cleaned it. I first washed it, scrubbed it, and if there were a little bit of discoloration or some markings on it, I used this to remove it. After I did that, I coated everything in this, so it has a, a plastic coating on it, it goes for the monitor and everything you see here. Um, I also used this, obviously not for the cabinet, but for the motherboard and for all the um, connections that needed some um, uh, deoxid D5 just to make the connections better. So let me now move over here to the computers and you can see the keyboard's in, the power's in, memory board is in and due to the fact that there's power the computer is running before i actually turned it on i tested to see whether or not down here the let me lift the keyboard very down there to see whether or not the cpu was running getting the real uh, frequency that they that it needed and that was four megahertz 
the crystal is somewhere down here behind the keyboard also. But we'll have a look at the motherboard in next episode briefly, just walking through it now that I know that it's running. So, we have yet another success. It's saying bootstrap loader revision 1.0, insert diskette or disk and type return. So, obviously there's not a floppy disk drive because they're way over there. That's also for the next episode where we need to clean that one. And perhaps maybe together with the keyboard. So let me uh, wrap this one up. We have reached the point where we saw the computers running. And after I made that recording, I moved the computer a little bit around. And now when I turn it on, nothing works. Sometimes when I press the reset button, you hear a beep and then the screen will do something. And then it boots up. I'm not sure what's happening, but I will have to look into that and investigate and hopefully find the fault for that for the next video. So for now, let me just turn it off. The computer is working-ish. We need to look at the floppy disk drive and we need to look at the keyboard. Depending on the fault finding until the next video, we'll see what we have to do. I hope for the best that it's maybe just a CPU or a chip or whatever that is just not sitting firmly in. It could also be the connection for the memory board is very loose. The um, cable in the back for the monitor is also very loose. So I will have to investigate that before I move on looking into the board itself. I did monitorize the computer bit. I looked at all the power rails in the back. If I take away the keyboard like this, we have the CPU down here. I know you can't see it, doesn't matter. So I looked whether, because the power comes in, and I looked whether or not I could see the five volt rails all the way down here, and everything is perfect. It's on 4.9, and up here on all the memory, it's on 4.0, so it's spot on. So the voltage is correct all the way. I looked at the clock, and it gives me four megahertz on the CPU, so that is also working. So I'm not sure what's wrong. I'll figure it out, hopefully. But for now, we need to wrap this up. I just want to thank you for watching this episode three of Oli Topa. And episode four will come within a week and we shall see how far we go with that. So thank you from here. Remember to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified when I populate new videos. And please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Thank you for now. My name is Saibo and goodbye.